Uh, thank you, Chairman Meehan, for holding this very important hearing today, um, as well as the committee for allowing me to serve uh, today in this capacity. I also want to thank the panel for appearing before us and providing valuable expert testimony on these critical issues. Every year, the United States ad admits thousands of refugees through the United States Refugee Admissions Program, a program authorized by Congress to support and provide opportunity to those who live in fear of persecution. Since 1975, the United States Refugee Admissions Program has admitted over 3 million refugees. The United States resettles more refugees than all other countries combined. Resettlement in the United States gives refugees the opportunity to share in America's promise and the ability to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of their happiness. Many refugee entrepreneurs have received help from the United States and the community organizations that assist in refugee resettlement. Because of this support, there have been countless success stories of refugees that have come to America and have given remarkable contributions to this country and their communities. Hence, we can agree that the Refugee Admissions Program is beneficial and that it should be continued. However, vulnerabilities in the program have been exposed. In 2011, the Department of Justice issued indictments to Wad, Ramadan, Alwan, and Mohammed Sharif Hamadi, two Iraqi refugees living in Kentucky, for plotting to provide material support to Al Qaeda in Iraq. Since the indictment was issued, both Alwan and Hamadi pleaded guilty to all counts. The Department of Justice, specifically the investigations of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, should be applauded for their efforts in thwarting this potential terrorist activity. Unfortunately, the Joint Terrorism Task Force was not the first entity that had information on one of these convicted terrorists. In, in 2005, Alwan's fingerprint was found on a roadside bomb in Iraq. This information was in a Department of Defense database that was not checked during his background investigation when he applied to the Refugee Admissions Program. This illustrates that we still have failed to close the remaining information sharing gaps that continue to persist since the September 11th terrorist attacks. I look forward to hearing today from the witnesses on how measures to close gaps in the refugee admission process are being put in place. In addition, separate and apart from the refugee resettlement program, I'd like to hear what measures are being put in place to ensure that the special immigrant visa program, a program for Iraqis and Afghans, is free from vulnerability. We want to keep the United States as a safe haven for both those in need and those that are here by birth or through, or through the naturalization process. One way to do that is to ensure that our government agencies are working together to collectively obtain this goal. Thank you. I yield back.